Hello and welcome to my CNI project briefing for spring 2023. My name is Jason Clark. I'm the lead for research optimization, analytics, and data services at Montana State University Library. You can see my slide. I'm I'm going to talk a bit about artificial intelligence and data science and how we start to introduce those uh, emerging technologies to our organizations. The title of this presentation is You Autocomplete Me, Navigating Human-Machine Relationships for Responsible and Sustainable AI and Data Science Implementations. A word about where I'll, you know, kind of how, what outline I'll follow as I move forward. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about research motivation. Um, where we um, have opportunities to create dialogues around artificial intelligence and knowledge work. In particular, I'm going to point at a number of artificial intelligence and data science prototypes that we use locally to facilitate some of these dialogues. I'll look at organizational learning opportunities and competence. How do you build comfort and familiarity with AI and data science. And then I'll make a note of various challenges, research, research implica implications, and potential next steps with parts of this, this work. So in terms of motivation, um, I'm on a team uh, with Sarah Mannheimer, who is our data li librarian and a project director for the Responsible AI Tools for Values Driven AI in Libraries and Archives, uh, um, IMLS, Institute of Museum and Library Services project that was uh, awarded in the um, summer of this year. So this is early, early stages with, with that particular project. Um, Sarah has always been stressing, uh, as we think about artificial intelligence in CLAM institutions or libraries or archives, um, thinking about how do we support the responsible use of this new technology um, and uh, giving us a sense or focusing on empowering practitioners, uh, finding their role, finding how we might think about implement ethical implementations of this technology. So parts of this idea really begin with uh, my involvement on the grant with Sarah. But there's another component uh, that I've just been kind of, I've been seeing, acknowledging, and sort of feeling myself um, around general, I wouldn't say, uh, obviously excitement. Um, I think there's some real potential within a lot of these technologies. Um, but I, I also sense a little bit of just uh, anxiety. Um, just general, like, what does this mean for us? How do we, do we have a role here? Um, and so you'll see comments like this and, and, and the, the F word, the fear, um, is the one that I sort of key on a little bit, just, just to kind of understand, um, there is a role, um, but there, there is something, there's a bigger question here for, for a number of us. Uh, this is from a quote from the uh, Archives, Access, and Artificial Intelligence um, book. Um, it was released, I believe, 2022. So, in our setting, um, I'm, I've been wanting to kind of connect the, the grant work, uh, the research, to practical implementations in the library and create some discussions around artificial intelligence and how it might apply to knowledge work. So one of the first things we did or that we looked to do um, was to connect um, our staff um, to the possibilities around this work. And, Part of that was facilitating dialogues. Uh, these dialogues are open, um, invites go across the organization. Usually they are uh, framed with a demo, a particular demo of AI or data science. Um, 
and then a primary concept. And because this is an evolving stream uh, of research, but also the technology is evolving quickly, um, we focus on a series of discussions, something that we can kind of come back to over the course of the year. Um, what I have on the screen is an example of one of the first invites, um, just so you can kind of see how we set expectations. Um, we were pretty clear in uh, introducing, when we introduced this concept saying, it's okay if you just wanna come and watch. Um, There'll be some of us who are ready to talk through what we're seeing and we do need a leader or facilitator that is usually me. Um, in this case, we had a primary concept of uh, just the larger language models and, and ver the various generative computing models that are um, being seen in things like chat GPT uh, that product from open AI. <clears throat> that's got a lot of, uh, it's been in the news uh, a bit lately. <clears throat> I hope you can kind of get, you can kind of see that tone and these slides will be available. Um, but the, the first part of this is creating a comfortable place to have a discussion, to ask questions, right? Um, to, to sort of be like puzzled by this technology. So the dialogues are centered on trust truth telling, I had a different word there, I didn't use it, and interest in shared learning. Like there's a general sense of like, these are open, pop in, um, but we want you to be uh, interested in learning, learning more. Um, so the other component of, the, of these discussions, I kind of mentioned the, the you know, framing, creating, keeping, keeping it open, bringing a number of all levels of the organization, making it open. Um, one of the other things we do in these sessions is come up with, it's usually some kind of prototype or concept, um, concept that's demonstrated by a pro, an existing prototype, could be either or. Um, <clears throat> in the past, we've used things like an image classifier to, to work through inclusive metadata discussions, like what's lost when this model isn't informed or supervised. Uh, other things like, how do you talk to a machine? So like voice interfaces, um, how might you uh, automate or um, kind of create a chat agent that, that helps with web archiving or something like that. Uh, and then I've presented on with Layla Sturman on general text summarization, natural language processing we've done to create accessible citizen science. <clears throat> so all, all of those prototypes exist locally, um, but sometimes um, if something is sort of out of scope or something we haven't really done locally, uh, we might turn outside. Uh, but as we frame these sessions, along with learning, open, fun, um, Tr trusting your questions, being able to be puzzled. So all of this is uh, the, the demos we, we use, we tend to um, use these, these, these very, these concepts, right? Um, just since there's a sense of play, um, dialogue is, is involved. Like we're gonna ask questions. We're gonna, sometimes we're gonna be constructive. Sometimes we're going to be, you know, that, there's that truth telling concept. Um, sometimes we're gonna be really critical of what we see. Um, and moreover, the, at the end, we want to be able to explain what we're seeing. Um, that with the local Im implementations, that helps because it's either been um, somebody like me or a lead who's done the work. Um, so we can, we can talk about the models that we used or why we made this interface choice, right? Um, but all of that is kind of filtering into the, the prototypes we bring into these dialogues. Uh, I'm going to just demo one. Uh, there, there are a few that I mentioned there. Um, but generally, uh, it, it's usually a form of like knowledge work that we have in place. And it could be something like creating metadata, um, summarizing text. Uh, we, we, we have a, a couple of reference librarians, instruction and reference librarians who actually do systematic review kind of work on articles. Um, so survey the literature, but also summarize it annotate it. Um, 
sometimes it might be something like a web, web archiving experience, which is about what I'm what I'm going to show show. But uh, usually grounded in some form of library or archival work, just so we have local context to understand the technology. So in this case, it's um, a com a, a an interface that that inquires of you that sort of brings you through the different stages of archiving and taking a screenshot um, and adding metadata to a particular item for for records uh, for the purpose of web archiving. So it'll, it'll, if you can kind of see, you know, we have we we use um, the, this the sense of play, sort of uh, you know, bringing a a ghost into <laughs> into the exchange. Um, you can see there, there are clear prompts for how you work. You know, what are you, what are you doing? What, what do you want us to help archive? Um, can, you, can I have a title? Uh, I'll take a URL. Right. So it's, it's stepping through this, but the whole, the whole point of it is it's conversational, right? And it's, um, you're kind of talking to the machine. So this is human machine interaction, really kind of um, building on that idea of a conversational agent, right? Um, if you'd want to add tags, you can do that. Um, how about a description? When once you're all done, it moves through. It says, "Hey, this is what I got. Does this look okay?" Um, I'm about. And then if you hit yes, you get. Oh, great! I saved it. I saved your metadata. I, I took a screenshot. I took a, took files. So now you have a record of this um, this particular item. And what these prototypes allow you to do is sort of humanize that technology, which I think is really important, not only um, to get a sense of how this works locally or why it would work inside of a particular workflow in your organization, but um, it, it just, it moves it from, from abstraction to practical, right? Um, you also provide an experience. Uh, people can talk or see or view or sort of passively watch something uh, on through a video, but if you give them a tool that they can kind of poke away at, um, work through, that's an experience that they that they take and then start to internalize. Um, and most importantly, I think in these prototypes, uh, because there is a level of local uh, implementation or control, um, we can ask questions. Uh, we can ask questions of ourselves. We can ask questions of the developer. We can ask questions of the technology. Why is it important? How does it work? All of that uh, is what makes the, the prototype uh, essential to the, the dialogue and, and sort of habituating uh, the, the experience of, of this new technology. So the other component of this is it brings about organizational learning. Um, and really what we focus here is what are the, what are the places that um, not only we can start to understand the technology, but how can we make it transparent? Um, and this kind of goes back to uh, Sarah Mannheimer, our project director at the Responsible AI grant. Her focus had always been, uh, how do you, how do you, think about implementation, but also sort of the ethics of implementation, why you're doing something that you do, um, how do you do it, how do you want to explain it to a public so they can have an understanding of it and start to trust it. Um, all of these kind of play into organizational learning and where where the di this, this dialogue and this, this conversation around humans working with automation, machines, AI, these sort of these newer computing models. <clears throat> Uh, and that requires transparency. And so one of the things that we do in, in these sessions is really try to unpack what are the roles we might have in a AI. Um, not everybody is a software developer or is wanting to work with code or, um, so there are lots of ways into that question. Uh, one of the ways we think deeply about our work is what kind of digital literacy can we promote? How can we lead and build out um, understanding of the primary concepts of AI? Um, and this really connects to our instructional role in the university. Um, so you can see things like what we'll talk about is 
what kinds of literacy uh, can we bring to, or literacy questions can we bring to AI? And it can be things like the bigger picture concepts, the primary concepts behind an AI uh, implementation, like generative computing or the models themselves, even the data sets that feed the models. Um, and then trying to understand the, uh, maybe even interpreting the models at times, all of that is a form of literacy that we um, engage uh, with, with the, within these dialogues and uh, empowering the, the, the staff and our other members of our organization to think through our roles. Um, facilitation is another one that um, we kind of talk about in terms of AI. So that not only just like understanding the new tools, where they come from, how they get applied, but how you start to work with them. And those of you who are might be showing my age, there was a time when we used to have to talk, uh, prompt search engines um, or log in to have access to a particular database. And you had to know not only just like credentials to get in, but you had to know how to talk to the system. We're in another one of those moments with AI where we talk about prompt engineering, like how do you not only understand the model, but how do you talk to it so that you can get new information or the information you want from that model? To, to, you know, how do you turn it from thought into production and useful production that you can, you can use? So facilitation is something we talk about. And then, uh, also supervision, like in general, what are the ethics of, of this, this particular tool? Uh, what kinds of data or how are these models working? So like quality control on the data or the models and then big picture, bigger picture, picture questions about how would we implement this? What happens if we implement this? All of that. Um, so if you go back to its literacy, its facilitation, its supervision, all of those roles are available to to us. <clears throat> I sort of talked about it at the beginning, but I want to kind of come back to the challenges of of this work, of seeing yourself in an automated process, um, not always immediately clear, um, and it can also create what I had talked about earlier. Um, I think I said the F word. Uh, what I meant by that was fear. Um, and uh, there's also there are opportunities uh, that come come forward in these discussions. Um, so you'll see general sentiments like what I have on the screen. What I'm terming uh, giving the term. I think we said fear before, but uh, I'm it's there's also some anxiety about this, right? Like there's some excitement about like, oh my, oh my gosh, I can't believe these things, this new technology, can, I can ask it a question, it gives me an answer, it writes an essay. That's in, in particular when we're talking about chat GPT, which is on, on the screen, but there are other ways that like general natural language processing, text summarization, other things that we've done. You saw the, the example of the chat bot as well. Um, but of what I would what I would call some level of existential anxiety, um, just like how do I fit in now? What does this mean for me? Uh, and in order to to have this discussion, we need to be real with each other and trust each other. So there is a component of the dialogues that's what is this? You know, how does this work? Why would this work for me? How does this help our organization? What does it mean for me? Like, it's okay to ask that question. <clears throat> and so that, that challenge sort of comes back to what does it mean is, is obsolescence on the horizon? Um, what does it mean? Do I need to, I need to learn new stuff? Um, and how we try to frame that is how can I contribute or what does this mean for our organization? Um, pausing here, uh, th what this does is it creates trust. Like if, if you're real about um, what you're seeing and how it might change a role or require new skills, that opens, that starts to open the door to, oh, okay, I can see where we go from here. Um, and without it, the dialogues don't, I, I think you can you can 
you can have them, but that's it's really more like a show and tell, um, which is not not the goal of, of these uh, of these sessions. So along with that challenge, there's this bigger opportunity, and what we start to see in these sessions is um, not only a sense of oh, like this 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 could lead somewhere, and sort of optimism building out. Um, but also a way to communicate new internal partnerships. So I mentioned the instruction and reference librarians who've been doing reviews for faculty or summarizing, um, annotating, doing annotated bibliographies or that kind of work for grant teams or uh, other, other uh, entities on campus. Um, and that service is really well received within a particular grant team. But it's also something that because we're relying on a form, an intensive form of research, production, um, single readers, uh, the, the idea that we could offer that at a broader scale to the, to the university or other, other um, audiences is just not really in the works. So one of the ways that, you know, we're able to kind of talk about where where current services are what's valued how do you move how could you connect a current valued service to a more to a broader scalable model um, and so uh, parts parts of this this dialogue have opened up discussions around what if we could help build automated um, annotated bibliographies with some of this work um, so that's a moment of like local summarization, you know, text learning, natural language processing, and then finding a way that it might help others in the organization. The dialogues create this, right? That um, it also builds a bit of empowerment, um, especially if you frame it with the roles that we have that are still remaining as you move to use these technologies. Things like I mentioned, facilitation, supervision. Uh, those, those are the two that really kind of jump out. Um, and then others, I think the other part of this is just allowing others to conceive what AI projects might be. Um, again, tasks that might be supplemented or extensions to current work. It's kind of where I was going with the, the new internal partnership it sort of came up in, in one of these discussions. <clears throat> and in terms of research implications, I really want to strike uh, there are, uh, I think as we, we will get into uh, the responsible AI group uh, really is moving to um, not only do survey the field, understand, um, so we're building case studies first with various um, libraries that we've, uh, in, uh, we've put out a call uh, for proposals to understand how AI has been implemented in libraries and GLAM. Uh, galleries, li libraries, archives, and museums. Um, so it begins with case studies, and then where that's going to go is studying the case studies, coming up with a, sent, a, a harms analysis tool or a way, a framework to um, look at implementation of AI and move it forward ethically and responsibly. Uh, and one of the implications of that research is uh, understanding that GLAM institutions have a role um, to lead questions um, even and work in generative computing. Uh, moreover, understanding how or why AI has a role in knowledge work, uh, that's something that we're already seeing with the local expression of this, this uh, grant research, of, um, building uh, some talk and some discussion around why this is a compelling technology or, or even in some cases, if it's not, if something that doesn't make sense. Um, and then finally, creating new research and projects based on that uh, trust and learning in the dialogue sessions. And as an example, one of the things that came out of our first uh, session was this sense of like, it'd be pretty cool if we had a chat agent that did some of our, can we, you know, can we start to stand up a prototype? So, um, in addition to the prototypes I mentioned, this is a newer one that hasn't been really released yet, but where we're going with it is um, generally uh, an agent that could uh, not only summarize work, 
but maybe even generate uh, one of the pain points we heard most recently is we've been working with a number of grant <clears throat> grant facilitators on campus um, and they had wondered about uh, are there ways that we might think about generating ex even just like starter template language for an NIH grant or um, and so one of the things some, a, an assistant like this could do is maybe if we fed if we taught it enough um, and showed it some grant writing uh, it could start to provide a template for grant applications right right or like the, the beginning narrative of a grant proposal something like that um, this one also uh, this one in particular is building out to actually do some of that summarization I mentioned that uh, instructional and reference librarians were starting to, to do um, so even as we you know we could set there um, it's you can give it a prompt and then eventually it will you know if you say can you Build, here's the article. Can you summarize it in two or three sentences for a particular audience? Um, and you can kind of see it, see it doing doing that work. Um, but again, lots. E even as this appears like, oh well, the work is done. There's so much work in teaching the model, making sure you've got the prompt correct, understanding how it's going to interpret and what what it's doing. Um, all of that is still high, higher level intellectual work uh, that just sort of changes uh, in this mode. It sort of changes where the, the energy is not really spent on generating the text. It's editing, auditing, um, making sure that the, how that model is conceiving of your question. Um, is it doing it correctly? That's where the work is in, in this mode. So. Um, but encouraging, encouraging to see how these dialogues create um, not only new ideas, but also um, people wanting to engage in this. And even since we had our last, I'll leave, I'll leave with kind of close with one, one, one thought. Um, people have been experimenting with um, having fun with some of this, this work. And I think there were a number of, uh, so some staff create closing reports, um, you know, small narratives for end of night. Um, emails or just like um, updates uh, and they've been running that through with a particular you know asking particular uh, whether it's chat GPT or some of the other other models like uh, cohere AI or um, there are a number of companies they just keep uh, they are um, very popular right now um, but what what's happening is they're actually using these to give some personality to the um, uh, their email reports on what happened in the day or the night, you know, saying, can you write this uh, as Jeffrey Lebowski from the big Lebowski, you know, give me, you know, giving the prompt and then watching that come out and then sharing that um, just to, just to show how this, uh, the, the group is generally starting to engage and sometimes critical, sometimes having fun. Um, but all, all through this, learning how to how to prompt the system and how to move and use these technologies. So, in closing and thinking about where what does it mean, I, I would start with the top of of the title here, just of of the slide, how, establishing our role in AI and knowledge work. Um, the things I'm saying on the slide are, you know, we are part of that AI and research and learning process, but also demonstrating how to apply that to university research and institutional data questions. Um, you can see me starting to kind of think that way as I talked about the grant writing template proposal. You know, yeah. Is there a way to, to, to think through generating text like that that could give researchers a, a lead so they're not looking at um, a blank a blank piece of uh, a blank screen and a, a flashing cursor. <clears throat> so I will leave you with that thought. Um, these slides will be available. I'll put some references on there. You can um, look at those and then also know that you can contact me anytime. Uh, we are just getting started with the grant work um, and you can see how that grant work is filtering into organizational work. And I'm 
always happy to talk about this. So please reach out if you have any questions. Thank you.